Hey guys, what is up? This is Stephanie, AKA the Limitless Babe, reminding you today and every day that you are limitless. I feel like it's been forever since I've been on with you guys, but you know, I've just been trying to soak up as much of the final days of summer with my daughter. Um, we had another really awesome mini vacation and, you know, just trying to and just enjoy every last minute uh, before getting back to reality. So <laughs> here we are. And I want to touch on a topic that I know I've broached a little bit in some of my other videos, but you know, like everything is always ever evolving, ever growing, ever changing. And I think that it's important to consistently touch back on certain topics so that we can stay on board knowing that where we are is perfectly okay. So this one is definitely more guided toward the mamas. So gentlemen, if you're watching, thank you. <laughs> if this one isn't for you, that's fine. If you want to still hang out and listen, I mean, it's always beneficial to see both sides, to understand other people in your life better. So um, I would recommend sticking around and maybe listening to this one, but if not, that's fine. I don't take any offense. I'll see you on the next one. But this one is for the mamas, particularly for the single mamas, because as much as we may want to say that there's no difference, there is a difference. Okay. Um, being a single mom is a lot more work, right? Like being a mom is already extremely challenging and it's a lot of work and it's a lot of selflessness. And when you're doing it by yourself and you don't even have that extra pair of hands in the home to help you, even when you want to do simple things, like I know I've talked about this before, like when baby got sick and I was covered in vomit and had no one to hold her because she wasn't feeling well. So I could take a shower. Like, like those little things are huge and we take them for granted sometimes I think. And, you know, I just, I want to pause for a second and give all the single mamas out there a huge shout out because I recognize you. I see you. I know how hard it is. I know all the work. And I didn't script this one. So I'm going to kind of just fly by the seat of my pants on different topics that I was thinking about regarding single motherhood. One of the main ones that I know I'm currently still struggling with, and I'm sure I'm not the only person I'm sure. I mean, everybody's body is different, but let's talk about body image. Let's talk about the bounce back, right? As they call it the spring forward or the bounce back, like my daughter is two right now and I'm not unhappy with my body, right? By any means, I'm not unhappy, but I'm still like mourning and missing the body that I had right before I got pregnant. So let me give you a little backstory on my life. I am, and I've mentioned it before, a former fat kid. <laughs> and I say that with the most love, like it's just who I was. And I don't think there was anything wrong with that, but it did set me up for a little bit more of a struggle journey as I got older, right? Like I had to actually work to get to a place of fitness, to get to a place of being comfortable in my skin. And, uh, you know, I would say I lost, I lost a lot of weight when I was in high school. So a teacher had introduced me to Tai Bo and that was like game changing. So I started doing it every day and I got really thin and not to say that thin is great and, you know, heavier is not great. No, like wherever you are is perfect. The only question that you have to ask is, are you comfortable and are you happy and are you healthy? So I guess there's three questions. I said only question. The only three questions, are you comfortable? Are you happy? And are you healthy? And your opinion is the only one that matters here. So I knew that for me, when I was heavy, I wasn't happy. I wasn't comfortable, healthy. I actually was very healthy and active. I was a dancer even still. And, um, but I, I knew there was room for improvement. You know what I mean? Like, so I lost a lot of weight and I pretty much maintained, like when I say a lot of weight, like we're talking like 50 pounds initially. So that's a big, a big deal. So, um, Anyway, I don't want to bore you with all the details, but you know, like while I did lose all that weight, I, my body now struggles to keep weight off. So if I want to stay slim, I do have to work at it. You know, like I'm not one of those people that's just naturally slim and naturally muscular or athletic. Like, no, I have to work at it. 
and I'm okay with that. So before I had my daughter though, I was almost seemingly effortlessly in the best shape of my life. And that all started, um, I know I've talked to you guys about that one breakup that like really stung and hurt because it was the one really great guy that I dated and I was mourning that. And in the process of mourning that relationship, I put all my energy and effort into becoming the best version of myself. So I started running, which was hilarious because up until that point, I always would tell people, listen, if somebody's not chasing me, I'm not running. I don't see the point. I don't like it. I don't want to do it. It doesn't feel good. Not doing it. Well, fast forward to now this time in my life where I'm going through this really emotionally challenging time. I found running to be cathartic, therapeutic. Like it was incredible. And I started doing it all the time and my body just melted. Like, I mean, at that point I wasn't heavy. I was still, you know, like I said, I had lost 50 pounds when I was younger. And for the most part, I've really done well at keeping it off. I really good at catching myself when I start to gain a little bit and pulling it back, but, and always in healthy ways, guys, like I've never like starved myself or done any crazy stuff. Like, listen, I love balance. I love sweets. (laughs) I enjoy the occasional carb and I am not cutting anything out. So that's just my personal preference. Everybody has to do what works for them. But for me, I need to live a lifestyle of balance. I would rather work out three times as hard and eat something that I enjoy than deprive myself of something. So anyway, like running really had a great impact on me. Also during that time, I started doing yoga and um, yoga and spin. I was already a Zumba instructor. So because I now had all this extra free time and I needed to earn a little more to make up for the difference in the rent, I, uh, I started teaching more. So figure I'm trying to compare me now to someone who ran every day, who had the freedom to run every day, who taught Zumba anywhere from three to six times a week who did yoga and spin each separately four times a week and also had the time to meal prep and to, um, you know, look up healthy recipes. And basically my entire life was revolved around self and not in a negative way, but in a very self-reflective way, in a very nurturing way, in a way that I was genuinely taking the best possible care of myself because who else did I have to? I mean, I had my dog and I took very good care of her. That's another thing. I was taking my dog for like three mile to mile and a half long walks a day. So I was also walking a lot, running, yoga, Zumba, spin, like constantly moving and eating very healthy. So now fast forward (laughs) three years later, I have this amazing child that I wouldn't trade for the world. But now I'm also doing it alone. And again, I wouldn't trade that for the world. I love having her home. But I have to recognize that like, I can't beat myself up for currently not having the same lifestyle. Granted, you know, in a few years when she's in school, then that's on me, right? Like, because at that point, I'll have a little bit more time to be able to get these things done for myself. And it's up to me to figure out how. But right now, like, I accept the fact that if I can only get a few 10, 20 or 30 minute workouts in a week, like, that's still good. That's still progress. And the crazy thing is, is that I, over the last two years, struggled a lot because I would catch myself beating myself up and obsessing over the scale and obsessing over, you know, why don't I look the same? So after I had my daughter, I actually was able to get myself back down to my pre-pregnancy weight. And yet I wasn't happy. Remember I said, are you happy? Are you healthy? Are you uh, comfortable? You know, like, like I wasn't comfortable and I wasn't happy and I wasn't my healthiest. So I had to think, well, why? What's the difference? If the number on the scale is the same, what is the difference? And I realized, well, hello, you were doing all of these activities that build tremendous muscle. Like, especially never discount yoga guys. Like if you want to work out that doesn't, and that's the thing, I'm a huge sweater. I don't love sweating, but I sweat a lot when I work out. So I love the fact that yoga offers me an incredible workout and 
I sweat, but I'm not sweating as much as I would in a heavier duty class. And on top of that, I'm getting that mind like body balance. I'm getting that calm. I'm getting that breath work in that is so important, especially if you've been through any type of traumatic events or um, any type of abuse. Like it's super important that you have that outlet to bring yourself back down to baseline. So yoga was like, oh my God, incredible for building my strength. And I didn't realize it until one day I went to work out with someone and they wanted me to do something that I knew years prior, I couldn't do. I think piston squats, I think that's what they're called when you squat with one leg out. I was never able to do those, right? Well, all of a sudden I can. I, was, I, I mean, I was complaining about it. But I was like, all right, I'll try, I'll try, I'll try. I blew them out of the park. I did it better than that person. And I hadn't done them ever in my life. But you know why? Because of the balance and the strength that you build in your core from yoga. So yeah, I was in the best shape of my life before I got pregnant, guys. <laughs> and I'll get there again. But why am I talking about all of this? Because I know I'm not the only person that feels like this. I'm not the only person that struggles. And yeah, fine. Well, this doesn't help. There are some people that have a baby and you look at them a month later, two months later, and it looks like nothing happened. Nothing changed. They look exactly the same. They look freaking fantastic. And again, I, I want to emphasize, are they single moms? And not that I'm using that to make an excuse, but the reality is that when you're doing it alone and you don't have those extra hands, especially if you did it in the last few years when we had this pandemic happening, you weren't just handing your kid off to anybody. You know what I mean? So it does make it more challenging, especially if you're used to certain things. Like again, I was used to running and yoga and those are two, well, actually all of my activities, none of them are really mommy and me activities. Like, yeah, I could run with the stroller. Guys, it is awful. If you are a runner, running with a stroller sucks, okay? I mean, I did it once in a while, but it is not the same feeling. The thing that I enjoy and love about running is the freedom, waking up first thing in the morning, throwing my clothes on and just going and feeling free. It's also the feeling of, I don't know how to explain this. I talked to one of my clients about it and she actually understood what I was trying to say, but it's like, when I run, I feel like I'm lifted. I feel like, like my chest is going up to the sky and I just feel up, up, up. And it's a great feeling. It's freaking amazing. Like I understand the whole runner's high thing. And when you're running, pushing a stroller, you're down, down, down. Your hands are attached to something. You're not free. So I don't enjoy that. Um, and yoga, like I could do that, but for me to do it enjoyably, she has to be sleeping because if mentally I'm worried about, okay, well, what is she doing? What is this happening? What's happening here? It's not as enjoyable. So I do do some mommy and me yoga with her, but it's not the same. You know what I mean? Like I do it because I want her to build that practice as well. And I want her to understand how beneficial it is but it's not the same feeling as doing it for yourself, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know what that is, but anyway. <laughs> so, um, yeah, uh, I, I, I've had to learn to offer myself grace. And so what I've been doing is taking, you know, uh, like I have the Peloton. I do either like the Flash 15 or a 10 minute upper body. I'll, I'll break up my workout instead of doing, you know, a 45 to an hour long workout in once. I'll break it down and do 10 minutes here, 10 minutes there, whatever I can. But the point is to not give up. If you're struggling with this, don't give up. Give yourself grace. So don't give up. Give yourself some grace and find creative ways to still get it in. All right. So whatever works for you, like I've realized that for me, I feel my most energized when I wake up, when my body naturally wakes up. So for whatever reason, my body naturally wakes up now around 530 or 6 a.m. Now in the past, I would fight it and force myself to sleep a little bit longer, get up at eight. And now I'm groggy. Now I am so much more tired, so much more drained. Why? Because my body only technically processed those last few hours of sleep versus that restful night's sleep that I had. So I noticed that for me, if I get up at that time at 5.30 or six, now my daughter's sleeping. She's amazing. She sleeps late. So I know that's another thing. I do note it that not everybody's kids are the same. Not everybody's home is the same, but my daughter um, usually sleeps until like 
nine or 10. <laughs> like she was sleeping until eight or nine and now it's switched to nine or 10 since summer schedule. Um, I am gonna try to regulate her back to eight or nine just because I need her to get back on track with also her naps and get everything, you know, back on schedule. But for right now, I have all that time to do things for myself. And granted, like, it's not like I can go out and go for a run, right? Because I mean, she's here by herself. I can't leave her. But again, I have the pellets on. I can hop on the bike. I can get in a quick workout. I can clean the house. I can do what I need to do. Um, another new thing that her and I have been doing, which I absolutely love and I highly recommend for any single moms out there. Um, I, I got a bike. I found a bike, a neighbor was getting rid of it. I said, Hey, can I have this? Yeah, sure. Okay, great. So I got a bike. I bought an inexpensive trailer, a children's trailer at Walmart. And now like I'll, as soon as she wakes up, I brush her teeth. I change her diaper and here we go. We're going for a four mile ride. And I got to tell you, like, I feel a great workout from that and she enjoys it and she's out in nature and, you know, she talks to me and sometimes, you know, I feel like she does really great for like about 40 minutes and then she needs a little bit of some other type of stimulation. So then, you know, I'll give her my phone and put whatever show she wants to watch for those last, you know, 10, 20 minutes of our ride. But I'm bonding with her. Um, we're both getting out in nature. She's seeing the importance of exercise. I'm working towards getting my pre-baby body back and it just feels good. You know, like it just feels feels great. So this is something that I'm very excited about. And I know obviously as it gets colder, as snow approaches, I'm going to have to figure something else out, but at least when it's nice out, we have this option and I'm really excited about it. And I really love it. And I hope that she loves it as much as I think she does. <laughs> um, so I wanted to talk about that, giving yourself grace and don't compare yourself to anybody else. Again, like, especially it's so tempting when we see these celebrity moms give birth and then like, bam, they're back in shape. Like I love her, but like Robin from Peloton, like girl, you're a beast, like in the best possible way. Good for you. But I can't compare myself to Robin because one, she's got a husband, right? And as much as we don't want to admit it, like that makes a difference. That helps having that extra pair of hands and that extra support helps. And also not having all the financial burden on yourself. So like you have to, when you're a single mom, you have to take care a hundred percent of your child's needs. You have to a hundred percent, keep a roof over your head. You have to a hundred percent, make sure that you're making time for yourself and for bonding with your baby. Like there's a lot of pressure. And yeah, when you have that partner, it alleviates some of that pressure and it makes it easier. So give yourself grace and definitely don't compare yourself to anyone who has a partner. Okay. And also don't punish yourself for that because your story is exactly how your story is meant to be. Like I've talked about this before, like everything is happening for us, not to us, wherever you are in this life, whatever your journey looks like, I promise you, this is exactly how it's supposed to be. And maybe you don't understand why. Maybe you're thinking, well, that's not fair. Why is my story like this? Well, because your comeback, your thrust forward, your victory story is going to be so big, but that can only happen if you take charge and if you take lead and if you decide that that's what you want, okay? So everything's happening for us, not to us, but at the same time, we have to do the work. We have to be willing to make uncomfortable decisions, difficult decisions, um, you know, do the harder stuff to achieve what we want. Where was I going with that? I don't even know. But anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, whatever your story looks like, however you became a mom, however um, your life is, you can turn that into the most amazing story ever because nothing is happening against us. Even those difficulties, even those tough circumstances are there as a catalyst to give you strength, to show you what you're capable of, to show your children what they are capable of. Because when you pull yourself out of that hole that you think you're in and your kids see it, 
trust me, they're paying attention. Trust me, they're proud of you. And trust me, you're teaching them that they are capable of anything. Okay. So never lose hope, never lose sight of that. Never think, oh my gosh, well, my whole story is not how I imagined. Well, no, it's not, but that's okay. Because this is here for a reason to push you, to help you, to make you the best version of yourself. So embrace it instead of rejecting it. And I promise you in the long run, we're all going to be celebrating some super victory stories. Um, another thing I wanted to point out. So yeah, don't compare yourself to, to other people, especially people that have husbands that have a lot of money. Um, and not that there's anything wrong with that, but you know, like someone that has a lot of money has different struggles than someone who doesn't. I don't want to say they don't have struggles because of course they do. Everybody has struggles. But when you're a single parent, I know that for me, something that stays on my brain a lot is, okay, am I going to be able to keep a roof over our head? Okay. I need to budget this. I need to do that. I need to figure this out. And I need to do as much as I can to earn money while not taking time away from our bonding. And that's the thing. Like for me, Bonding with my child is super important. I know that she is only going to be this small for such a brief amount of time. And I want to make sure to make the most of those memories. So I get it. And it's, it's an impossible struggle. You know what I mean? Like, how do I push and earn, but also bond? And it's, it stinks guys. Like, let's be real. It sucks. But again, in the long run, I know that none of the sacrifices that we are making are going to go unnoticed by our kids and they are going to appreciate it, whether they ever admit it or not, <laughs> but they're, they're going to appreciate it. And at the end, if you do what you know you need to do, you're going to be so proud of yourself. You're going to look back on these tough times and think, holy crap, like I was a beast. I was incredible. I can't believe, like I, I survived things that I know other people would never be able to survive. So be proud of yourself. Um, another thing that I wanted to point out, um, recently I watched this movie on Netflix. I wanna say it was called Look Both Ways. I mean, it was a cute movie, right? And basically the premise is um, showing this young girl who's in college and how her life unravels in two different paths. So one, if she had gotten pregnant in college and one, if her pregnancy test came back negative and she was able to follow her career path right out of school. So we see how both unravel. And I, um, one of my favorite parts of the movie was she's having a conversation with her mom as a single mother. I don't think at this point she had already had the baby. So mind you, she had plans to move to California with her best friend and start her big career and live her amazing life. And instead now she had to move back in with her parents and is pregnant, has a baby. And in her case, yes, the father is present and they do really well at co-parenting, which is awesome. Um, but it's still really hard work you know, and there's a process that people don't talk about. And this is what her mother says, is that one thing that people don't talk about, and this is not just for single mothers, this is for any mother. A lot of women go through a period of mourning. And I know I did, and it was mourning a few different things. You're mourning your dream of the way that your life was going to go, right? Like we all dream, well, oh, like, well, I'll do this and then I'll do this and I'll do this. And then this will happen. And, you know, I'll have my 2.5 kids and my white picket fence and my husband. And for some of us, particularly the single mothers, like, I don't know a single mother out there who, any, at least one who didn't get artificially inseminated. If you didn't get artificially inseminated, I don't know a single mother out there who planned to be a single mother and who thought, yeah, that's like my ideal situation. I can't wait to do that. Guys, no, none of us pick this life, right? Like granted, maybe we make choices that didn't align with our desires, our ultimate desires, but nobody picks this. Okay. It's freaking hard. 
So there's the morning of that. And I know like I heavily struggle with that because I always said like, I'm never having a child until I'm married. And, you know, not, that's not a judgment toward anybody else. That's just was my personal preference. And fast forward, not only was I not married, I was single by the time I had my daughter. And um, that was just like processing that. So processing all the change, the physical changes in your body, the emotional changes, because your hormones are all out of whack. Processing the fact that, wait a second, this wasn't my plan. This wasn't my dream. This isn't how it's supposed to happen, you know, supposed to. Um, that's really hard. And then, so there's the grieving that process, right? But even if you have the husband, even if you have the life exactly how you calculated in your brain when you were a little girl, nobody talks about the fact that life is never the same after you have a child. Like I explained before with the running situation, like that's something that I had to bury. I had to bury the fact that I'm no longer the person that gets to wake up at 6.30 a.m., 7 a.m. and just hit the pavement. I'm not that person. That's not a part of my reality, except on the days that I don't have my daughter. It, it's, it's not my reality. And I need to get to the place where I'm okay with that. Okay. Um, you know, you're not the person that can just go out and meet friends for brunch whenever you want. It's not my reality. You know what I mean? I can do it once in a while, but it's not my reality. I'm not the person that gets to sit down and enjoy a calm, peaceful meal every night. That's not my reality. And that needs to be okay. Oh, my laptop is dying and I hope it makes it. Hold on. Where are we? 10%. I think we'll be okay. All right. So there's the mourning and grieving part of accepting that your life is never going to be the same as it was. And here's the crazy but beautiful thing. You have to allow yourself to feel that. First of all, let's talk about that. Like, I think that a lot of us go through that grieving, but we feel shame. We feel bad to ever say it out loud. Like, oh, but if I say it out loud, it's almost like I'm saying that I resent my child or I wish I had never had them. No, listen, I would not take a second with my daughter back to have my old life. Do I miss it like crazy? Absolutely. Oh my gosh. I miss the freedom that I had. I miss the ability to travel whenever I wanted. I miss having money because all my money goes to her. <laughs> like I miss a lot of things, right? But I wouldn't take any of it back because the joy in her is incredible knowing that I am part of raising an incredible human being who is going to be an incredible human being in society who already is showing me when she recites her affirmations on her own, like she's going to change the world. Like I would never take any of this time back, but I got to acknowledge and verbally say out loud for myself that, yeah, I miss my old life. I miss my old body. I miss my old freedom. But here's the crazy kicker is that if you can release that, if you can accept that and release that and say, yeah, I do. I miss all of that. Then you can turn around and create a new future. So your future is not going to look exactly like your past. And thank God, because we're ever changing, ever growing, ever evolving. But you can decide, and I know this is something I've talked about um, in one of my old videos, and it was, what does your, um, something like, what does your best life look like? What does your future look like? In your future life, what do you want it to look like? So take out a pen and paper. Now that you have a child, now that you accept the fact that life is never going to be the same and that you're pissed about it and you miss it and you're sad. Okay, now that we've processed all of that, that we've allowed that to come out, take your pen and paper and write down, okay, now with my child, what does the next level version of us do? So hence my bike and trailer, next level version of me. Okay, maybe she doesn't run first thing in the morning, but she takes her bike out and her and her baby go on a nice long ride and get a great workout in. So find little ways that you can 
adjust your life. And keep in mind that, especially if you have a young child, this um, list of what you do to create your future self, it's going to change constantly because your kids are changing constantly and, you know, their needs change and everything schedules change, all of it changes. So you have to be able to adapt quickly, but don't stay stuck. Don't stay stuck in the grieving in the morning. Let yourself feel it. Don't stay stuck in the shame of feeling those feelings. Let yourself process them. Let yourself feel them. And now figure out a next level plan. So that's all I've got for today. I'm sure I'll talk about this again at a future time, but I hope that you guys found this as beneficial as I did when I was realizing this for myself. And yeah, if you haven't, maybe check out that movie. Like I said, it, was it the best movie I've ever seen? No, but it was cute. And it also, I love the fact that it showed not only her mom giving her that amazing advice, but it also showed how even though sometimes your life goes in ways that you didn't plan, no matter which way it goes, it always works out. Guys, your life is always going to work out, but you've got to get your mindset right. You've got to do the work. You've got to find a great coach. You got to figure out how to shift your perspective in a way that brings you full circle to what you ultimately desire. Um, again, the name of the movie was God, I forgot. Look Both Ways on Netflix and have an amazing limitless day. And hopefully I will see you sooner rather than later. Bye. Oh.